welcome back. We are having our first conversation for this morning, and it's all about honoring Sir Colville Young through the So Igo Folk Ensemble. We are joined by three musicians. I'm sure you will recognize some of these faces as well. We have here with us Brad Patico. Everyone knows Brad Patico. Of course, he is uh, one of the organizers of uh, this event as well as a musician. Well known to a lot of young and older folk as well. We also have with us uh, Delmar Lanza, and he is the guitarist this morning, and Leolyn Stevens in the middle, our storyteller. Guys, good morning and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so uh, let's talk about the event first and foremost, uh, honoring Sir Colville Young through the Soy Go Folk Ensemble. Um, uh, what was the reason behind having this event? Because of Sir Colville Young. If it wasn't him, you know, I don't think I would be having this. But after we had the presentation by him uh, in November, we had a presentation on uh, Creole surnames. Mm -hmm. And uh, after he addressed that, he asked, he said, maybe we can do uh, a storytelling night. And I ran along with the idea. I said, okay. And uh, just about last week, I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't have said okay. Mm -hmm. Because things were kind of getting on the tight side, you know, of planning and everything. Yeah. But um, since I got on board Leolin, and she was telling me about some other storytellers that we have. And the storytelling is not necessarily uh, Nancy stories. Stories about life experiences and this sort of stuff are welcome, you mm -hmm. know. And if there is anyone out there who would uh, want to tell their story or, or is a storyteller, they can always contact me. There's a little um, flyer that I sent um, for people to see and tell them about the time and place and everything. Mm -hmm. Burrell Boom is my home. Mm -hmm. And it's just before you reach the racetrack, you, you know, you're in the area, so it wouldn't be hard to holler my name and I will come and find you. You're here. You know I mean? You're here right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. So Sir Colville is somebody that I respect. He's the one that wrote a lot of the songs that I do. Yeah. Some of those folk songs and the, the Christmas songs that we have so, all, like every year, mm -hmm. we have the comic of Bring Back the Old Fashioned Christmas. Yes. And uh, Neighbor Get Up. Um, so, so, I look at what this man has done for our community, for, for the Belize Creoles in general. And for the arts. Yes, the arts in general. Donating music equipment to most schools. And I cannot name them all. But, you know, for me, his <coughs> Creole Proverbs book that he had written was something of interest. Mm -hmm. Because my mom used a lot of Proverbs in our brought up mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I used to refer to a lot of proverbs with my kids in bringing them up, you know. And uh, time longer than rope, you know what I mean? The, I, I don't want to say something like that, so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's excellent that you brought up uh, Sir Colville's uh, contribution to the arts um, and to our Creole culture as well, because mm -hmm. um, perhaps maybe the younger generation don't mm -hmm. recognize his contributions in that way. We know him as our former Governor General of mm -hmm. Belize, but as far as his contributions in the arts, maybe they might be a bit too young. And it's mm -hmm. interesting now that we're having this conversation because just uh, Tuesday of this week, we showcased um, a look back uh, on a Christmas in Belize in 1999, and there was a very old clip of Sir Colville Young playing the piano. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that was him in his earlier years, but mm -hmm. I, I imagine that was his prime as well um, in the arts too. So to see us having the opportunity to look back um, at some of those uh, great moments that was shared uh, mm -hmm. in his prime, um, but also with the arts in general and, and, and really recognizing how unique and beautiful the Creole culture is, I think it's, it's, it's wonderful for us to have an event like mm -hmm. this. Um, I want to mm -hmm. jump into the storytelling aspect we have with us, Miss Leolyn Stevens. Um, let's talk about what you will be bringing to this event. Okay, um, I will be telling Creole stories mm -hmm. 
and it's well Anansi stories you know from I was um, a little girl growing up you know we used to listen to the stories on the radio mm -hmm. you know we mostly would every time we get together we would sit and listen to the Anansi stories and by listening to those stories it had motivated me you know um, to tell stories too and I also come up with my own stories oh. you know at times and from that time on you know I continue to you know work at it it just you know give me that urge to you know tell stories and whenever I tell a story I put my all into the story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should add that she's a teacher also right yes which I'm sure helps a which I'm sure teacher. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, but one of the things that I think about too is, and, and I wonder, and I would kind of want to get your views on it, how important is storytelling to cultural preservation? You know, passing on the core values uh, of, yeah. you know, your culture, yeah. down generations. What, what would you think? Well, I can share that. Mm -hmm. um, for me, storytelling was our TV. Mm -hmm. It was our radio. It was our livelihood. You know, it... Um, you either feel some emotion when you left there because if they tell you about the ghosts and this other stuff and you left somebody house after nine and eight and you have to walk through the dark to get home, hmm. that affects you. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but when I say, you know that in the, I hate to say this because it kind of bring out my age for sure. <laughs> but back Come in on, the you're 19, young. <laughs> in the 1950s, man, when you go to people's homes and this other stuff, you go to visit. They may, have a, they may have a campfire outside where we sit around and we just talk, you know. Uh, but it's just to, to keep us entertained. That mm -hmm. was our entertainment, you know. Um, we see around Christmas time, why I remember this broke down thing so much is because at our home, we used to have the, the, the men come with their banjo, their guitar, their grater and the fork and this mm -hmm. sort of stuff. They sit down. And they just play music. Mm -hmm. You feed them with a little bit of cashew wine and, you know, mm -hmm. your cadence, a little niceties and things. And they want to play all night. I time. love that you're saying yeah. that. Yeah, right. Because we, we, we had um, some guests uh, this month talking to us about uh, a Brahm taking place at Gales Point. And I said, mm. you know, my granny used to tell me that Brahm happened in Boral Boom. That's right. So I love that you're speaking yeah. about this now. And I, I experienced that. You know, so most of the songs, and, and listening to, to, to myself sometimes, I say, man, this is a song from Duncan Pinkard, mm. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and uh, I, I, I can literally picture him singing a song like, you know. Charm me but not hear me, for I be a soldier a hell. Put a feather in a rat but tail, you put lad hack in a hell. <laughs> Charm me but not hear me, for I be a soldier a hell. You put a feather in a rat but tail, you put lad hack in a hell. Why? Should I land someone <laughs> when his home is far across the sea? Wishing if I could die, my friend, I am on my way. If I obese for jail, I am born. Now, that part there, you know, you're hearing about names in that song. You know, why should Alonzo moon? Alonzo Schultz was the writer of most of these folk songs that we hear. They're, they're, uh, apparently, I understand that he was from Germany, Schultz, you know, mm -hmm. but he took the job of an ass around Belize City and stopped at houses from house to house and he would be singing these songs while he raked his job mm -hmm. you know. So most of our songs, why he sung about going to Paya Bispa Jail, Paya Bispa Jail was a place in Chetomal where that was the prison. Belize never had a prison in these. Mm -hmm. So all, all criminals went to Chetomal. To Mexico. And he, yeah, Mexico. Yeah. And he was one of them, apparently, the way he did the song. And he said, somebody squealed for now. We talk about this long mouth. Mr. Seeley got one long mouth, wife, and mouth run off like a sow. Oh, he got one long mouth, wife, and wife. You know, so. It's so interesting because uh, some of these songs, like while you were singing, uh, uh, I'm trying to make sense of mm. what he's saying. Was yeah. that the situation? Mm -hmm. I thought it was just me having a difficult time. Yeah, I was time. like, okay, yeah. who, who, <clears throat> what? What's happening? Why? Yeah, like it. Why should Alonzo moon? Uh huh. When his home is far across the sea. So he's talking about his hometown. You know? So wishing if I could die, my friend, because he's sad about 
this situation that he found himself in. I am on my way, Pio Bispo Jail, I am bound. Let's try it out. Is, is this something that we can expect, uh, perhaps uh, a look, a deeper look into some of these songs that we grew up hearing as right. children? Yeah, and um, you don't know, you don't understand the meaning of it, You don't understand. Right? You, you don't know. The same thing we do with the song, Neighbor Get Up, This Is Another Christmas Morning. I'm a Christian, and... There are things in that song that people will say, not song Christian like. Mm -hmm. But we must remember that Sir Colvin, when, when he was writing about these things that were happening, right? Uh, um, we make mention of throw, bring, out, bring, bring out the stuck of rum, bring out your wine, bring out your whiskey, bring out your comic. That's what people do around Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So it's, he was only relating to what was happening. Not I mean that it promote. Mm -hmm. drinking wine I mean drinking uh, you know liquor and that sort mm -hmm. of stuff right mm -hmm. so we have to understand the songs and, yeah. what I mean. and looking back at our culture again if we look back and try to preserve our heritage man these things came out during those times it is always good they say when you look by your past you can appreciate your future because your future and what who we are today it's not really looking back and want to go back there mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. because pit toilet and that kind of thing they i wouldn't want to go back to the days. <laughs> you know I, I feel comfortable having it in my home you know and uh, yeah so but looking back you can see how we have improved yeah then you realize man you know god has been good to us yeah, yeah. but right? you know another thing that i like i found benefiting is is that it provides a lot of context to the things that we see around because you know that there is a when you go around Belize City, you know that there are a lot of stories behind some of the things that are mm -hmm. around yes, the city. Right. But we just don't know what those stories mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so I think like this, the storytelling and even some of the songs mm -hmm. uh, with the names that they put out or the, the names of the streets or things that are happening, it provides context to yeah. a deeper. It's like history. capsules. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's mm -hmm. like, exactly. It's like a time capsule. When I think back to this song that was written by one of our villagers in Boroboom. Ralph Kingston. Mm. He wrote a song about um, uh, sal sal pork every day. And I remember when I used to get up in the morning to go to school, my mother used to take the big tail, mm -hmm. right? And they cut off uh, the fat part and things like that. And they'd have fried it and they make like chicharron, right? Mm -hmm. And that would have been least sal mode for put the bread down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We used to get like mali kwata pong a cheese and we share it wrong and things like that. I'm quite happy, mm -hmm. you know. But I like what upon a cheese. I used to tell people just jokingly because you know, I, take, I, I used to take my leap piece, stick it in my nose, and when the bread pass, you know, kind of. <laughs> <realize Wow. something. laughs> well, uh, I, I know we, we don't have much more time, but I mm -hmm. want to uh, highlight uh, the date of the event. Um, where do we go? And uh, is there a fee associated with uh, attending? The only fee we have is um, bring enough money to buy snacks and that mm -hmm. sort of stuff because we'll have Mr. Barbecue out there. Okay. And um, they will be having burgers and sausages and you know, we'll have drinks on sale also. And when I say drinks, I don't mean like... Uh, Hard drinks. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, it's the 29th? 29th uh, at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. We encourage people to come earlier We'd love to have, if the, the weather conditions permitting, we'll have a campfire. Okay. We'll have it by the campfire. Failing that, we also have the fellowship hall that we can mm -hmm. gather together in and, you know. I think... Have I Miss Yolin tell me stories, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I think this is an excellent uh, uh, event for families to come together. Um, mm -hmm. uh, as Josh and I, we were saying, some of these songs, we hear it, but we don't understand right. it. So yeah. to have... Uh, all the generations gathering and maybe you know your mom or your grandma saying well this what is song mm. mean or getting further mm -hmm. context from you guys mm -hmm. as well i think there is an opportunity for younger people to appreciate these music and uh, these stories as well of course mm -hmm. the contributions of sir colville young and other musicians like yourselves right. and there will be more storytellers mm -hmm. apart from um um, I'm just having you all in here because she was available. Mm -hmm. Not too far from me, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> right wrong the corner. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, all right, so the 29th of December uh, in yeah. Boral Boom at your location. They mm -hmm. say if you go by the Hastrakan Hala, Mr. Brad Zakia. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> 
But uh, if uh, persons would like to uh, ask any questions on how to get there, do you have a number that we can reach you by? Six seven one two six six three. Okay. That's my number, Najou. I think so. I right. think so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, as we wrap up this segment, let's enjoy uh, just some of the musical pieces that we can expect uh, come the 29th. Another Christmas morning Get out your stock around Get out your wine Get out your whiskey Get out your hammer cake man And dance and sing No one listen to what I say Make music ring now For it is Christmas day Met Stiso sing parang For the Christmas And the human child have a guardian, but all I really want to make my music is for my paper, a spoon and grape, so upside down the room, and beat the rhythm, make music king now for it this Christmas day. Run now, if you could only hear the drumming, part of my table there, and draw the cock. And if you peep there, you see some proper punta. So dance and sing now, and listen to what I say. Make music ring now, for it is Christmas Day. Met Stiso sing parang for the Christmas. And the woman child have a guardian, but all I really want to make my music is for my paper, a spoon and greater, so upside down your broom and beat the rhythm, make music ring now for it is Christmas Day. All this and more we can expect uh, honoring Sir Colville Young through the So Igo Folk Ensemble. Guys, this was absolutely lovely. This is the perfect, this is the type of Christmas I like I'm to feel. I'm feeling Christmas. I'm feeling Christmas now. Yeah. Well, uh, if you would like to feel more Christmas after the break, we will be making some gingerbread houses. So, stay tuned.